Welcome to Tropical Weather Bulletin number 1000. Before we begin tonight's proceedings, let's take a look back at some of our history over the last 12 years of Tropical Weather Bulletins. Our first bulletin ever was narrated by me on May 26, 2013. And welcome to your Tropical Weather Bulletin for May the 26th, 2013. It's six days until the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. Um, there's all three of them over the Pacific Ocean at the moment. 96p down in the South Pacific, where the season is virtually off limits at this time of year. This is the best track forecaster we can cook up at the moment, according to the uh, latest model. The format underwent a bit of a facelift for the 2014 season, although we didn't produce that many that year. Here's a little look at what it looked like. The first 2014 and it's the beginning of the Atlantic and Central Pacific hurricane seasons as it heads towards the Eastern Pacific. So let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery, seeing what's going on around the world, just in case there's anything out there. Sri Lanka and also another one on the other side in the Arabian Sea, but nothing um, that has developed into an invest or anything like that. So 93E, currently with winds of 30 miles per hour and a pressure of... A Bulletins fell out of favour until our famous reboot near the beginning of the 2017 season. From Force 13 HQ, this is April 21st, 2017. Here's your Tropical Weather Bulletin. Good morning, Friday, April 21st, and we have Tropical Storm Arlene active in the Atlantic. We're issuing updates on that in separate videos south of the Chuck Islands of Micronesia. So we have three systems. We're going to be focusing on 93W in our feature, 25 miles per hour. The format didn't change very much until the start of the 2020 season when there were a few cosmetic changes and the introduction of Force 13's Ticos. Here's your Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 2nd. Well, it's good to be back in the normal way for tropical weather bulletin season. Pretty quiet right now on that whistle stop tour. So this is Tropical Depression 3 right now, 30 mile an hour winds, a pressure of 1007 millibars, CDPS stage 2. This is what we expect over the next few days then. For the storm to meander and the National Hurricane Center indeed on their forecast has the storm moving extremely slowly, that's because they really have no idea where it's going to go. Ever since, the general format has remained pretty much the same, especially from 2022 onwards. Of course, we've made a few visual improvements since then as well. So without further ado, let's go to our 1000th Tropical Weather Bulletin. interest that we're currently monitoring with Cyclone Alfred likely to strengthen before it hits Queensland on Thursday. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for March the 4th. So around the world it is uh, less active than it has been lately but we still have these two storms active. Alfred we've actually just downgraded to a remnant low because the circulation uh, is pretty much bare and any convection associated with it is now too far away from the centre but it could still make a comeback and strengthen as it reaches Queensland in the next couple of days. We're looking at possible landfall now just south of Brisbane. Well, looking in the Atlantic, it's 89 days until hurricane season and we have no areas of interest to track. Of course, there is a US severe weather event ongoing today and tomorrow and possibly the next day as well. In the Eastern Pacific, it's 73 days until hurricane season. And whilst there is a little system there that looks interesting, I can tell you looking at animated imagery that it is not rotating in the slightest. So Eastern Pacific weenies back in your bags over there. Uh, it's not going to happen. Well, in the Western Pacific, we're taking a look at one or two little systems there in the very deep tropics, storing up some thunderstorms around the Palau region, heading towards the Philippine Islands, uh, but really not too much to talk about in terms of organized activity. North Indian Ocean is a pretty similar story. Uh, a few clouds around the peripheries of the coastline there of Sri Lanka and also along the southern tip of India. But overall, a very quiet picture here in the North Indian Ocean too. 
So the activity, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere once again. And it's the Southwest Indian Ocean where we still have Hyundai active. We haven't changed those percentage chances compared to yesterday. I actually thought we might have seen an upgrade today, but still 40% and 50% for those systems from left to right. Uh, still the remnants of Garance down there as well, way down in the higher latitudes. So in the Australian region, don't be put off by Alfred there being an X now rather than a circled tropical cyclone. It could still deliver some significant winds and heavy rainfall to the whole region of southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. And we're going to take a proper look at it now. Uh, interestingly, it has moved quite far east. It is now closer to Lord Howe Island than it is to Queensland, 485 kilometres. 574 from Point Lookout, which is near Brisbane, 593 from Gold Coast, 624 from Brisbane itself, the city, and 730 from Toowoomba inland. Well, there's still good model agreement that the storm will turn westwards and strengthen again on its approach towards the region uh, and then make landfall probably Thursday and then move inland quite quickly and die off. Let's check out satellite imagery across the tropics right now. Of course, first off, looking at Alfred still moving southeasterly at this point, which is quite key, actually, because sea surface temperatures are much lower the further out it goes before it starts to turn back towards land again. And that means there's less energy for the storm to take on. And that is quite clear as we look at this satellite imagery. Not only that, it appears to be getting less symmetrical as well as we look towards the southern side of that swirl there. It's just a naked swirl now with low level cloud all of that convection uh, is well gone mainly down towards the south side what's left of it and so far away that we don't really feel it's actually a tropical cyclone anymore look at that dry air you can't even see the low level circulation on that viewpoint as we look at the water vapor and there it is, you can see it vaguely on the enhanced infrared imagery. What you can see on the left hand side there as well is that hardly any precipitation is reaching the coast at this point. A few little possible storms starting to flare up there in the northeasternmost part of Queensland, uh, sorry, New South Wales into Queensland. Uh, but at the moment, the storm's still moving southeastwards. It will still have some decent winds present. About 12 hours ago, there were actually still 60 to 65 mile per hour winds detected by ASCAT. There's some radar what we could see from the sensor viewpoint uh, not much at that view now this is Hyundai Cyclone Hyundai which is actually still going and looking better than Alfred is at this point both uh, systems on their way out uh, this one is obviously moving away from Madagascar now at this point there were some extra storms there over the southern part of Madagascar in relation with the band the trailing band of Hyundai uh, but dry air is getting closer to this one too so I expect that we'll be seeing the final throws of this one very shortly next 24 to 48 hours Hyundai will probably be away and it will drop down towards the south quite quickly. Uh, looking at some basin wide views then or regional views this is the US East Coast uh, there's some more storms on the way an enhanced risk today and tomorrow uh, with a massive 10% tornado risk actually across the southern United States Here's the eastern Pacific where you can see a ghost of a system there uh, if it was peak season or even in the season at all that would probably become a tropical cyclone and this is the western Pacific a little flare-up down there as well not far from Palau towards the southwest of Palau actually um, throwing up some decent convective activity and a few couple storms there just off Catanduanes in the Philippines too. This is the North Indian Ocean where there's some cloud cover building pushing northerly slowly over southern India. Uh, probably not much rain in that. Looking at the infrared view across the whole southwest Indian Ocean region We'll be looking out for that next invest forming in that massive cluster of clouds towards the top right then on that imagery there. And now looking at this one, you can still see tons of convection on the southern side of Alfred, very far away from the center though, I must stress, and most of it still offshore. Lord Howe Island actually probably getting the worst conditions from the storm out of any land areas. And this is the South Pacific showing um, an array of clouds and thunderstorms east of Fiji and Tonga actually. That's partly associated with X Seru, which is actually still traceable as well. Well sea surface temperatures are holding pretty steady near their minimums for the time of year in the Atlantic. Already only 28 degrees off the uh tip of Central America though. And the Western Pacific also looking fairly good as well as we look at it here around the Philippine Islands, 28 degrees plus in quite a few spots already at this early stage of the year. Southwest Indian Ocean, still plenty of heat to the northeast of Mauritius. That's now probably the best spot to look at after those temperatures decrease a little off Madagascar after the passage of Hyundai. 
And around Australia, well, <laughs> this image tells you a thousand words, really. Huge heat content there along the northern side of Australia. Uh, a bit of a cool spot now in the Coral Sea after Alfred uh, and Alfred itself over temperatures of around 25 degrees Celsius right now. You can also see those small trails of blue if you know where those recent cyclones have been near Madagascar and also where Alfred is uh, denoting those recent storms. But in general, it is above average across most of the tropics, especially off Western Australia, which has been the hot point all season, actually. Um, and in the Central Pacific, still that cool pool there. But look out towards the east along the equator. That is the Nino 3-4 region, which is actually getting quite warm. Could be an indication that we're getting into a warm period. So Western Pacific Oceanic heat content, still quite a bit about there around Guam, westwards towards the Philippines. Uh, obviously no systems to take advantage of that yet. And even the Eastern Pacific already throwing up one or two little hot points right now. South Pacific as well, uh, plenty of energy, just not where Alfred is or anywhere near there. Uh, any, uh, the best place probably for a future system now would probably be near Fiji or towards um, Samoa. Uh, realistic places for a tropical cyclone formation that is. Of course it's further north where the highest heat content is. GFS computer model over the next five days takes a look at Hyundai continuing on towards the southeast there well out of harm's way will turn post tropical eventually I'm not sure exactly at which point it does that there and then these two systems behind the next generation of storms appearing um, and we're giving moderate chances to both of those GFS quite confident that both of them will actually reach hurricane equivalent status the easterly one should remain out at sea and look quite pleasant quite large too uh, but the one towards the left hand side we'll cover in a minute hits Madagascar now this is Alfred GFS still quite confident with it holding a lot of strength look at that actually gets back up to hurricane equivalent status that's category 3 pretty much Australian scale uh, before it makes landfall just south of Brisbane probably over the Gold Coast and then moving inland southwesterly in the end I'm not convinced it's going to be as strong as that uh, but obviously take preparations it could get pretty windy and wild at times it's still a very broad system southern side will be the strongest looking at rainfall expectations as well listen up very carefully on this one because the Brisbane area those rainfall estimates have dropped drastically now looking at probably maybe 60 millimeters of rainfall total whereas the forecast models two days ago were calling for nearly 400 millimeters but places further south still getting up towards those values so along the border between Queensland and New South Wales and then for a big area south of there mainly New South Wales more than Queensland now looking at the rain threat there with quite a few places getting between three and four hundred millimeters total. So let's take a look at the longer range day five through ten and you can see those two storms once again the left hand side one uh, past Madagascar into the Mozambique channel uh, the sweet spot there becoming a very powerful cyclone that is probably a category four on the Sappho Simpson scale starting to turn towards the east towards the end of that 10 day period as it feels the recurve uh, and then off it goes is that possibly a landfall in Madagascar there near peak intensity yes it very well is but that is getting towards long range Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Forza Team merch store. We can check out everything that's going on right now. And needless to say, this is our 1000th Tropical Weather Bulletin. As soon as Alfred is out of the way, we will be uh, streaming a very long live stream that's going to take over five days showing you every Tropical Weather Bulletin that we've done. Well, most of them, about 700 and something of them will be shown back to back. Now this is the Silly Range, day 10 to 16, so we see what happens with that cyclone afterwards. With all of that energy, it turns post-tropical into a massive extra-tropical cyclone there. Um, th I mean, that is not out of the realms of possibility. Thankfully for Mauritius and Reunion, it misses there and it swings southwards instead. Huge system southeast of South Africa, uh, still holding intensity quite readily there as it passes down towards the southeast and then uh, curves back up again in the end. 
Well, on this day, March 4th, 1982, we had two Category 1 uh, Sappho Simpson Cyclones active. That would be Borderline Category 3 on the Australian scale. And they both began with an I. Ian and Isaac caused much confusion, actually, I think. Uh, certainly did for me, looking back at it. Ian, just off the coast of Western Australia, and Isaac, uh, which was hanging around, I think it wasn't far from Tonga or Samoa, uh, heading clear towards the south. Isaac was off its peak. Ian was near its peak there, straddling the coast of Western Australia for several days, had an erratic track. Well, back to today, March the 4th, 18 storms so far around the world. It's been a little while since we had our last one, but we've had plenty of activity. At one point, we had six storms active. In the Atlantic, the first name this year is Andrea. In the Eastern Pacific, Alvin. And in the Central Pacific, Iona. In the Western Pacific, as we wait for our first Northern Hemisphere storm, the next name there is Rootip. My guess is it's probably going to happen there. The next Northern Hemisphere storm. North Indian Ocean, it's Shakti. So... Our bulletins will continue after our incredible feat there. It's taken long enough in the Australian region. The next name now is Courtney, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Yvonne, and in the South Pacific, it will be Tam. We'll be back again with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night. Become an ultimate fan today.